everyone, and welcome to our very first video update on the Genesis Shapers. For this update, we're going to be covering the meeting from the Genesis Shapers uh, from August 2020. And for those who don't know me, I'm David Vogelpohl. I've been in the proud to be in the Genesis community for over eight years. I lead Genesis at WP Engine, and I love helping the Genesis community get better together with my friends from the Shapers. Um, joining me today for this video update is a Genesis Shaper and someone I'm sure you all know quite well. She's an infamous course provider on LinkedIn, uh, teaching people all about Genesis. I know so many people that learn Genesis from this uh, wonderful person here, but joining us here for this video update is the uh, infamous Carrie Dills. Ke uh, Carrie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, so glad to have you here. Uh, for um, those curious, we will provide a, be providing future updates on the Shapers and video format. We're going to be transcribing each of the videos uh, for people that are, you know, obviously unable to hear the audio from the video to make that as accessible as possible. And then future videos will be released under the Genesis Community Livecast. If you remember that from a few years back, we will be revitalizing that and bringing that back. But for this month, we wanted to give you the video update so you can enjoy all the content and dialogue and context really around what was discussed in the Genesis Shapers meeting. So um, kicking us off for the meeting, uh, we had a, kind of a change of plans here for this month. We had a new moderator. Uh, normally, I would moderate the meeting. It happens in a Slack channel in Genesis Slack called Shapers. And our guest moderator for the month was Brian Smith. Uh, Carrie, have you gotten to know Brian very well? No, unfortunately, I haven't. I've just taken a, some Zoom meetings with him. But. Yeah, he was hired uh, on essentially the Studio Press and Genesis team shortly after the acquisition of Studio Press by WP Engine. And uh, Brian is distinctive in the fact that he is the first ever product professional to support the engineering efforts behind Genesis. Before the acquisition, it was pretty much just all Nathan Rice when it came to Genesis. And so one of the things that we did right after the acquisition was really invest in all these surrounding skill sets and uh, product management was one of them. So Brian was the, the, fir the first product manager ever in the history of Genesis, uh, but he kind of stood in for me while I had some training to do. Uh, for those that showed up, one of the first, uh, uh, Carrie, what's the first question we ask in every Shapers meeting? Uh, show of hands, who's here? Show of hands, who's here, yep. So uh, for those that were able to show up to this meeting, it looks like we have uh, Matt Lawrence from the Genesis Engineering team, Travis Smith, the Shaper, Genesis, uh, Chris Garrett, who's uh, old school Studio Press uh, team member, John Paris from Atomic Blocks, Nawai representing Genesis in Spain, love Nawai, he's doing a ton of stuff out there. John Brown from Night Seeds, Bill Erickson. I think Bill is getting close to as infamous as you are, Carrie. Oh, no, he started out as infamous, and <laughs> I remember seeing his website before I even started working with Genesis and being like, oh my gosh, I want to be that guy. So, so yeah. It's funny because you are so many people I know's Genesis origin story with your courses, and apparently Bill is your origin story. He is. I like it. I like it. Uh, we have uh, Robin, uh, Robin Cornett. I already mentioned Travis Smith. Ryan Kinstra. So the shapers meet with a combination of engineers and product managers from the Genesis side. So that way those folks can hear that feedback directly and participate in those conversations. Ryan joined the team from the Block Lab team, and they're working on Genesis custom blocks, which I should talk about here in a little bit. Matthew Cardenas, a product manager. Carrie Dills, of course, uh, Ryan Murray from 3200 Creative, a Genesis agency and shaper, Ben Moore from the engineering team, myself, Chris Garrett, I mentioned him already. I love Chris's emoji when he says hello, hello. it's two beer mugs clinking, and this meeting takes place at like eight in the morning for him in Mountain Time, US. So I don't think he really had the beers, but he likes that emoji. And then Remkus de Frias, of course, is right after him. And if you don't know Remkus, he's from the Netherlands, a wonderful gentleman, uh, also, of course, a shaper. He has the emoji that's like kind of looking like all confused at the top. Um, Carrie, do you know why we meet at such an early time for the shapers, yeah, for U.S. people? Uh, I believe that is to accommodate a global uh, shaper lineup. 
And so that it's kind of hard to get both sides of the globe at a, at a single time. So yeah, we're, we're starting at 7 a.m. on the West Coast. And what is, how does that translate over into Spain and Australia? Yeah, so that's uh, mid-afternoon for the European folks. And then for Australia, uh, depending on what part of Australia, it's either like 10 at night or like 11 at night. I think even midnight is the latest. And so I hate to disappoint all the flat earthers out there, but the world really is round and it's incredibly difficult to find a time uh, with a global group like this that you know truly works within everyone's work day. Um, so we settled on that early morning spot. And thankfully, Lee... Uh, and Schreeder, our Australian shapers, uh, were accommodating to that as we set that time. So not, of course, everybody's able to show up to every meeting. It looks like we have Gardner here as well, some others. Uh, but these were the group that showed up the first time. So the first question we had after a roll call and call to order, call to order, if you will, um, was basically, what are your ideas to celebrate contributions of under, underrepresented groups in the Genesis community and or generally address the challenges with diversity in the Genesis community? Um, this was a question obviously that was in, uh, very important to me and very important to us in general, just to understand you know, how can we as a community and of course how can we as the shapers support people in our community who often feel alone or excluded and like are we even aware that that occurs and, and really just to start to think about like how we as a group can help make the Genesis community even better than it's been in the past. I really like John Brown's suggestion here, Carrie. Um, I think the obvious avenue is to highlight folks on the Studio Press blog, um, really thinking about like thought leadership being an, an anchor point or kind of a finger hold, if you will, um, for helping to amplify uh, voices within the community that are often heard, um, but of course also to show others that might be in underrepresented groups that yes, there are indeed people that represent your group or the part of your group and that are also part of this community. What are your thoughts on that in general, Carrie? I think it's always great to introduce people, uh, give them the limelight, so to speak, and uh, let people meet just folks from the community. Uh, I know there's a lot of activity on the Slack channel and, um, and on Facebook, but Sometimes it's just like walls of, of names, but to actually kind of highlight a person and get their backstory and how they're using WordPress and Genesis. Um, the question then becomes, how do you, like, do, do you nominate or if you know somebody or if you are that somebody, um, how, would, how would you go about getting, getting a highlight? Yeah, I think uh, relative to the Studio Press blog, I think the other thing I'd certainly remind folks is certainly look for these opportunities within your own publishing and uh, thought leadership activities and events and things like that you run. Jill Binder, by the way, if you're uh, very involved with the WordPress community, you may be familiar with her. She has a great program and structure for approaching this. Um, and I think generally speaking, though, I think if you are interested in contributing your voice, uh, particularly, you know, voices we don't often hear, um, I think as it relates to the Studio Press blog, uh, please DM me on Twitter at WP David V uh, or DM me in Genesis Slack and let me know what your ideas are, what kind of stories you'd like to tell. Certainly we're working with uh, more diverse voices and thinking about that relative to the Studio Press blog. We are going to be increasing the number of guest posts we publish on the blog really to provide uh, more of a platform for the community in general to share what's important to them, uh, to share their techniques, um, to share what they've learned and what they want to teach others. And so we're hope hoping that will provide an avenue for that. I think another area is really just to have these conversations. Um, one of the things we'll be doing uh, around this vein is a very special episode of the live cast, which I'll mention a little later here. Uh, but these are some of the areas. So if you are interested in uh, sharing your voice, particularly voices we don't hear from very often, um, please DM me on Twitter or DM me in Genesis Slack. I think uh, another area that was really interesting to me as part of this conversation was some of um, Travis Smith's points, or actually it was Nick's points, around thinking about how accessibility could play into representation. Um, I know this is an area that Nick spends a lot of time on, and I know that people that don't have, uh, that have accessibility issues um, often will 
literally feel excluded from things and literally be excluded from things because uh, those things are not presented in a way that allows them to consume that content. Carrie, I've seen you post here and there around accessibility. It seems a bit like a passion point for you as well, but how do you think about that relative to this notion of diversity? Uh, I, being inclusive means being inclusive of, of all, including those with differing abilities or with uh, limitations around maybe, uh, you know, audio or visual. Uh, so, yeah, I like including that, you know, when you talk about diversity, you can get diverse across a ton of points, you know, race or geography or um, orientation, all the things. Uh, and accessibility is just another aspect of that, making sure that nobody feels left behind uh, yeah. and that they're able to come along. Yeah, I think also for me, feeling uh, being open-minded to what the notion of feeling unwelcome might mean, because you might not, as an individual, understand what being unwelcome feels like in certain contexts. Um, and it's really interesting. I think it's also, uh, I know WordPress itself as a community, perhaps relative to the rest of tech, has done uh you know, perhaps a better job than the rest of tech. Uh, obviously, still a lot of areas to go. Um, some of the areas we've made good progress in, probably not great and excellent, but good progress is um, inclusiveness around women. And I know uh, I'm really excited for 5.6. It's the all <laughs> women release lead release. Oh my gosh, it's a rock star lineup. Who's your favorite? I have my favorites. Oh man. I'm putting you on the spot. You know, I'll tell you mine. Oh, go ahead. I was super excited to see uh, Detail and Tanya Bork on that list. Among, I, mean, I know many of them, but those two names I was super excited to see. Really? Tanya made it? I did not notice her name there. Um, my favorites were uh, Josepha, of course. Uh, Josepha Hayden, for those unfamiliar with her. And then someone from WP Engine was also on that release, Sarah Riker. And uh, she's also one of the releases there. But I didn't know Tanya was making it. She's, a, of course, an old school Genesis person. Yeah, she's the triage lead. She is. Uh, she's incredible. I remember her and I had a conversation about that release uh, when Josepha, Josepha had reached out to a few people in the community to, to, to you know, see who were those women leaders that really, you know, fit the profile for this release. And I was like, you got to talk to Tanya Mork. Um, and at that time, Tanya wasn't really available for that, but it sounds like it worked out. So that's incredible. Um, so yeah, those are my favorites for sure. Um, and then I think, you know, the other area that came up in the conversation um, was really the issues that face the black community. And um, I think it's interesting to think about WordPress and Genesis in general, because I feel like as I go to WordCamps, as I engage with the Genesis community in general, we really come in with this kumbaya attitude that everything's okay and we love everybody and we're all friends. Um, but the reality is that that's not always true for everybody. Um, and, you know, as we discuss the issues, um, around the black community or with what the black community faces in WordPress and in Genesis, um, there really just wasn't a lot of conversation around it. And um, it can create kind of this uncomfortable atmosphere, particularly for people uh, in this particular conversation who may be black and certainly in the broader conversation for people who might be, you know, people of color, if you will. And, you know, even within the shapers and even within WordPress and even within Genesis, coming in with this, you know, we love everybody, we're all good, kumbaya uh, uh, approach, if you will, sometimes glosses over some of the challenges that people face in the community. Um, and, you know, we're really blessed to have shapers that are very caring and certainly a community that's very caring. Um, but even within these communities, there's sometimes fear, fear to engage, fear to discuss, fear to ask questions. Um, and I think people are like, you know, not wanting to step on toes and, um, you know, ruffle feathers or they just don't understand. But I think, you know, it was really over the course of this conversation, which really went on for several days, um, it was really inspiring to see really the shapers, uh, you know, kind of go through this conversation and come together around this this notion that uh, particularly with the black community, there's underrepresentation, there are injustices, even in WordPress, even in Genesis. And, um, 
you know, we need to be open to what the notion of feeling unwelcome might mean. And there are people in our community who feel unwelcome and alone. And I personally take that personally, and I know a lot of the shapers do as well. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's our obligation to be brave. It's our obligation to have conversations like that and understand what affects people in our community. And through this lens, I'm really also honored, we've already announced this, but I'll mention it here again, that uh, Shaper Anita Carter, also Genesis Communities member Sandy Jackson, and the co-creator of WordPress, Mike Little, will be joining us for a conversation around the contributions from the black community to WordPress and Genesis, but also the challenges the black community still faces today in this community we all love, we all feel kumbaya at these events, but really to help explore and understand what it's like from the perspective of the black community and black individuals. Really thankful for Anita for helping to inspire this. Also Katrina Martin, another Genesis community member, um, her and I had a number of conversations on Twitter around this. Um, and then certainly Sandy and Mike for joining us there. Um, but these are certainly important issues. Um, Carrie, I'm sure you've heard of Mike Little um, and, and thus uh, know or knew that uh, WordPress was co-created by a member of the black community, but I feel like hardly anybody knows this information. I mean, you, you feel like it's rare? It is kind of, unless you're OG or just really kind of uh, nerding out in the history of WordPress, uh, because Matt Mullenweg has gone on to be such a, uh, a visible part of uh, WordPress and its ongoing development today, whereas um, Mike Little has gone off and, and done his own thing. And yeah, it's just like, what? It wasn't just Matt that created WordPress? No, Mike Little in there too. Yeah, and Look I forward think, to hearing, hearing the story. Yeah, we had a little pre-call today and I wish we would have just recorded it and broadcast it because it was so gold. Um, hearing the perspectives. I don't mean to make lighter, of course. Um, I mean, these are very raw and emotional topics for people that, that do experience negativity um, on a frequent basis. Um, but hearing those perspectives from Mike and Anita and Sandy today, also Brian J uh, Kenny from WP Engines represents ERG, which is a people of color ERG in general. ERG stands for Employee Resource Group. Um, really just kind of preparing for the, the live cast next, uh, this coming Tuesday. Um, and thinking about, uh, you know, just really hearing their perspectives and learning a lot. I mean, obviously, these are things I can sympathize with, but not empathize with. Um, so I think getting that education, understanding those points of view is super important. And I just get back to this point, particularly with the shapers, is that there are people in our community that feel alone, like, stop, that should be be something we care about that should be something we learn about that should be something we act on and so i'm really glad the shapers you know kind of over the course of that conversation over the course of this couple of days kind of coming together and getting behind that notion I'm really proud to be part of that group and, and also really proud that we can have hard conversations because these conversations can be uncomfortable uh, but it's also important i think that we um, do a good job at representing our role in the community and really fundamentally helping the community get better together um, moving on to some of the more product focused um, questions from the shapers. Next up we have for, that was Brian posed to the shapers. You all were very nice to Brian as he was moderator, by the way, Carrie. You did a great job. I know, you didn't pick on him. I should have told you all to pick on him just to give him a hard time. Oh, no, if, I'd have, if I'd have known the troll switch <laughs> was flipped, I, I would have been there. The troll switch, yeah. Uh, Brian's such a great guy. I love him. But uh, moving on, so what elements of blocks uh, do you think should, I'm sorry, what elements of blocks do you think should inherit styles from themes versus be specific to the block itself? So I want to set the stage a little bit, Carrie, before we kind of comment on it and talk about sure. what the other shaper said. But for those uh, watching, essentially, of course, you have your block in the WordPress block editor, and then you have maybe your title, paragraph in the block, the image, colors, you know, uh, padding, and so on and so forth. And so which, the, the question was really to the shapers, like, when should the block have those styles, and when should this block inherit those styles um, from the theme? 
and the uh, variety of responses were good. Let's see, Carrie, <laughs> I'm going to read yours. Inherit all applicable theme styles with the ability to override in the block. So help us understand what you meant by that comment. Sure. So anybody that's ever switched a theme, uh, you have this thing of their, you know, the majority of style elements are inherited, you know, your fonts and maybe your colors. But if you had some custom stuff in there, it looks all out of whack when you uh, activate a new theme. So my thought was if you've got blocks, um, they're inheriting theme styles. So even if you change themes, your, constant, your content still looks uh, like it fits after you, after you would switch. But there may be cases where you want to override those theme styles. So being able to uh, still have granular control over styles without having to use like important in your style sheet. Yeah, it seemed like this was a somewhat consistent point of view. You know, Bill Erickson says everyone has different needs regarding block styles. It should look great on install for the majority of users who won't edit the styles, but would be nice if there's an easy way to minimize the styles added. He said he really loves how WP Forms, Jared Atchkinson, if I'm saying that last name right, he's actually a Genesis community member. He made WP Forms, um, but they let you select three different style options, full uh, theme styling, base styling, and only or, or no styles. Um, it seemed like generally this was around, you know, perhaps you kind of pointed on this too, Carrie, this notion of control that I'm, I'm not – it seemed like the fear in general with like should styles, uh, should themes win or should blocks win was really about at the end of the day making Frankensites, right? <laughs> Where like there's like, all these designs all over the place. Um, and so it, you know, like John Brown, it seemed like uh, his, his statement here is everything should be inherited from the theme. And John is a purist. He runs Nine Seeds, which is also a theme shop. So he's like, it should all be the theme. And then other people are like, eh, sometimes maybe, sometimes not. What are your thoughts on all that? Oh, you know, I wish John Brown had opinions. It makes me sad that he doesn't feel comfortable sharing sharing his true thoughts. That's why he's on the Shapers. He's like, <laughs> I, I love, you know he's going to cut right to it. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I think in the end, uh, something that's consistent is preferable because right now, you know, with, with core blocks, um, some of the selectors have changed. So you might have done a custom build for a client, styled out a block, and then core releases a new update and it breaks those things. Um, so ultimately, whatever it is, just some consistency um, under the hood. But yeah, is it most people, the people that are listening to this, um, you're probably the, the people that want to be able to control uh, every aspect of the design or at least set it up, set your client up for success. Once the client or the, you know, the ultimate owner of the website, they probably don't care about any of it. They just want it to look good. Um, so yeah, just doing that, implementing blocks and themes in a way that it just looks good is I vote for that. Yeah, absolutely. This way, this question was particularly interesting to the Genesis product and engineering teams thinking about Genesis blocks, um, which should be released on .org here in a week or so, very close to pushing that live free for everyone for those um, and curious about it. Um, and so as they think about the blocks to include there, um, obviously this notion of, well, what style should be there? What should I inherit? How should it look out of the box? Um, is a big deal for them. And, you know, Carrie kind of pointed on the fact that, look, there's, you know, a lot of different people that build a lot of different ways. And so, you know, uh, optionality is so key. Um, I love the way Robin uh, Cornette uh, put, am I saying your eyes at Cornette or Cornette? I I've only, Cornette. But... Yeah, I think so. Robin, please don't uh, throw stuff at us in the next shape. Sorry, Robin. Yeah, throw emoji at us. I love Robin's input. It's always so insightful. But she says here, one of the biggest challenges with the new block editor has be been dealing with opinionated styles and how to override them in the theme. And so the way I interpreted that is basically as you add a block from wherever you got your block from, the block includes styles a lot of the time and is, of course, not inheriting some of them from the theme. And so it's 
it's it's this opinion in the in the, in that design and its layout and, and what's in there and why it's in there, and of course the theme is an opinion as well, opinion of the theme creator. Do you think about this notion of like opinionation as you think about things oh, yeah. like blocks and themes? Oh yeah, because I mean, if anybody's ever looked at CSS and seen that, you know, the important the reason you have to do that is be because somebody has been overly opinionated. Uh, when they do their styles. And what that means is, um, let's say you've got a, a paragraph, uh, just your basic HTML P tag that you want to style. Um, and maybe sometimes you want to override that. Well, if you get something that's super opinionated, it may have like two or three levels of selectors above that P, which makes it really hard to uh, target and, and overwrite. I know this is, uh, I remember as the block editor was coming out, um, hearing all kinds of things from the community, but one of them was, uh, don't let those content creators mess up that beautiful site I designed. I made that perfect. My clients are going to totally destroy that beautiful site. Um, and I think, you know, obviously that's one of the paradigms the block editor is introducing is that, yeah, those content creators, those pesky clients can go in and change things. Um, I know this is why we added the, um, within the Genesis Blocks Pro plugin, um, we added the uh, option to restrict which blocks and which parts of the blocks can be edited by the end user, you know, as this way or, or of providing that control back to the site creator. I remember from my agency days, though, Carrie, my clients would never log into the back end of their websites. Uh, and if they did, it was usually an upgrade because they'd mess something up. And they'd be like, hey, David, we messed it up. Can you fix it? Do you yeah, experience it, this? Or? It, it was pretty rare. I would usually do, uh, I'd give them a login that was a stripped down admin uh, so that they only saw maybe pages or posts or the things that they needed to be concerned with. Uh, and then I'd create a separate full admin privileges login and just give that to them and tell them this is only in case of emergency and you know, you can't get me here. Here you can log in and access everything you need in your dashboard. But no, clients, most of the time, they just call and ask me to do it anyway. Nice. So do, you, do you actually design and build with blocks? Or like, are you, are you literally using the block to make pages and posts? I am converting a, a site right now uh, into a fully block-based site. And it's interesting. I'm actually excited. I know we haven't talked about full site editing yet, but... Uh, as I was laying out the page, I was like, oh my gosh, it would be so helpful if, for instance, the footer, uh, if I could make the footer out of blocks. Uh, and of course, that'll be something you can do eventually with full site editing. But yeah, I found the ability to, um, I mean, the block editor isn't perfect, but it's improved, you know, a hundredfold over its initial release uh, in terms of ease of working with it. And it's, it's pretty cool. All right, good deal. Everybody likes an easy button, right, Carrie? <laughs> All right, on to the next question in the Shapers meeting uh, from Brian here. Do we think it would be helpful if we added features within Genesis Blocks? And for those listening, this is the free plugin we will release uh, here in the next week or so to make it easier for theme creators to define and enforce styles within Blocks. So this notion of like, should Genesis Blocks provide the ability for theme providers to kind of define and enforce the styles within the Blocks? Um, it looks like John Brown says, I think it would be helpful if there was a standardized guide to block markup and block classes that theme providers could rely on. To him, he says, it's less about enforcing and more about predictability. Um, Carrie, I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on that. There was six 100 emojis on that thing. Not, yeah, six 100 emojis on John's comment. So this was a very popular uh, or way of thinking here from John. Uh, how do you think of this, Carrie? Yeah, and I, I think that frustration I know the question was specific about Genesis blocks, but I think the frustration comes from uh, WordPress core blocks and that it has been sort of a moving target. Um, we, I touched on that earlier. So yeah, it's less about how it's implemented and more about consistent implementation. So if theme developers do want to, um, you know, go in with their styles, they can, they can do that in a, uh, consistent and predictable way 
uh, versus having to constantly roll out updates to their child themes. If, if yeah, if this is really interesting for the Genesis R and D, uh, you know, product and engineering teams thinking about you know the role of Genesis and themes in general with uh, full site editing and WordPress core, which we've talked quite a bit about. Um, and you know, we have of course, um, you know perhaps opportunities to address some of these, at least within the Genesis context. But of course, one of the strengths and weaknesses of open platforms is there's all kinds of stuff out there. Uh, but obviously having some of that come from core uh, would be helpful. Nawai from uh, Spain there, um, he uh, says, yes, that would be a key feature for theme creators. He was he was in support of that. Uh, Remkus de Frias, uh, uh, he agrees 100%. I gotta see if your comment here matches your comment you just gave, Carrie. Uh oh, let's see. It'd be nice for for devs <laughs> handing off sites to clients to be able to enforce styles to some degree. Okay, that was pretty consistent. So, so one distinction there: there's people that are building themes to be sold or to be used across multiple sites, and then there's bespoke themes. And when you're talking about enforcing styles, you may want to approach that differently. You know, like if it's if you're handing off to a client you want to put some guardrails up around what they can and can't change. But if it's a theme that's being released uh, for, you know, general use, people should be able to customize it however they want. Yeah, for sure. That's a good distinction. Um, we also have this comment from Sally. Uh, you may be familiar with her as WP Fangirl. Uh, she's kind of replying back to John here and she says, I think that's more a core issue. That's exactly what you said, Carrie. Um, than a Genesis issue, and there's definitely a lag in updating the handbook, I guess through that notion of documentation and what to e expect. And then John kind of goes on here, but one of the things he says here is, um, now it's my battle cry for the Genesis, basically saying, you know, I've, I, I've wanted this in core for a long time, but then, then he says, and now it's my battle cry for the Genesis <laughs> ecosystem. Carrie, you have this this picture. Oh my God, why can I, get, I can't remember what this is called. <laughs> What is this picture with Mel Gibson holding up the sword? I forget. Uh, I think it's from, is it from the Patriot? No, it's not from the Patriot. It's the. Oh. Mel Gibson's always holding up something. He is, he is. He's got the paint on his face. It's the one based in old England. And I can't remember the name of it to save my life. But yes, you're like, ah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then Sally kind of points out, you know, obviously the, the core editor team isn't, you know, avoiding documentation. I think also the thing to recognize is that, you know, this is an evolving uh, set of technologies. I mean, full site editing hasn't even been, you know, fully released yet. Um, and so, but I do think there are opportunities, of course, relative to the Genesis ecosystem, certainly the Genesis uh, suite of products to provide paths for people that help to address things like, you know, when should a theme be in control of the style? When should the block and how should those two things kind of pass back and forth? Um, Brian's next question to the shapers was, what integrations would you like to see between Genesis blocks and Genesis custom blocks. And there's an example here, uh, by sake of example, creating a custom layout with custom blocks <laughs> and then have the layout appear in the Genesis blocks menu. So to set the context here a little bit before we jump in, I mentioned Genesis blocks as a plugin that we will be releasing on wordpress.org in the next couple of weeks. We will also be releasing a plugin called Genesis custom blocks. And again, you can uh, guess what it does. It lets you create custom blocks without having to know React. Um, Carrie, did you learn JavaScript deeply after Matt's battle cry at WordCamp Philly? Okay, so no? I did not, but I was reading uh, a WP Tavern article by uh, Francesca Moreno, who uh, she's, I love, I love her. And uh, she talked about despising JavaScript deeply. And I... <laughs> I kind of, I, I kind of related to that. Well, so. yeah, I think you should still probably think about learning JavaScript, but if you're not ready for that yet, uh, <laughs> Genesis Custom Blocks is coming. It will help you build it, uh, uh, your standard uh, WordPress, uh, you know, kind of builder developer skill set, if you will. Um, you can leverage actually with Genesis Custom Blocks, so you don't have to have you know React skills right now. Just build your own custom awesome blocks. The shapers have been able to test some of these things in advance. Of course, we have open betas for anyone to test, but sometimes we'll share things in advance with the shapers as we're like fine tuning how we might approach something. And so um, you know some of them were able to test it, and some of them weren't. 
Uh, Nawai says, the example sounds great. Uh, on the other hand, it would be nice to be able to add the custom blocks to one-click theme setup so you could use them for your theme demos. Um, I don't know what the reply was here. I'm going to have to actually go read this. Ah, Ryan on the engineering team is like, ah, interesting. Uh, the answer there is, yes, absolutely, you can do those things. Um, for those unfamiliar, one-click theme setup was released uh, about two years ago. It was actually right after the acquisition. One of the big pieces of feedback WP Engine got was, setting up themes is so hard, it takes forever, and I've got to read all these documents. And so we basically built a wizard system into Genesis itself for third-party theme developers, and of course, also StudioPress, to be able to, within seconds, load in plugins and demo content so it can look like the demo uh, when you use it. Um, Carrie, I know, I mean, it's been a long time since you probably like started with the theme, but what was it, do you recall what that experience was like when you installed a theme and your site looked nothing like your demo, like the demo side of that theme? <laughs> Actually, in one of my courses, I had a, a slide that said what you expect it to look like when you activate a theme and it was you know the demo and it looked beautiful what it actually looks like when you activate a theme and it's just like a header and a sidebar with some dummy widgets or placeholder widgets in there um yeah and after working with them for a long time and familiarity with genesis it doesn't take me that long to set up but a, a very much a frustration can you beat um, 30 I, seconds, Carrie? Can you beat 30 <laughs> seconds? No, no, oh, I cannot beat 30, 30 seconds. seconds. I've, yeah. Now that now that one-click onboarding is is there, I'm, I'm using it. I'm loving it. Yeah, did you have to update that blog post, Carrie, or whatever that piece of content was you were just talking about? Uh, you got a date that. on it. So people yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah there. I like that. I like that. Um, it looked like Nathan uh, Rice said, consistency across the product family seems to be a theme as it is, uh, that has recurred since we launched uh, Genesis Framework a decade ago. So for those unfamiliar, Nathan Rice, um, he's actually in engineering management now. So that's been, you know, part of his progression in his career, uh, you know, after Studio Press kind of joined WP Engine, but you probably know him as the essentially only and lead developer of Genesis for many years. And so he's kind of, in my view, putting kind of like a head nod to like, well, this isn't new for us. We've always had this notion of, um, you know, kind of uh, integration and in a sense playing nice among all the different things in the Genesis universe. And so thinking about that through the lens of like, I'm going to make a custom block with Genesis custom blocks. So then how might that express itself um, throughout, uh, you know, the other products in the Genesis universe? Uh, Brian Smith agreed with him, and then Nathan Rice responded with a, uh, I want to call it Tony Stark. I'm blanking on everybody's name today. Uh, what's this um, guy's name? I'll call it's it, Tony he is Stark. Tony Stark in that. Yeah, Tony Stark. Yes, yeah. Tony Stark meme. I see what you did there. I like it. Um, what are your thoughts on all this, Carrie? I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? I'm going to make a custom block, and then if I'm going to use it, have one click theme set up, or have like other ways I might be engaging with blocks in the Genesis context, like I should just be able to see that there, right? Exactly. Especially if you're create like Nine Seeds or one of the theme shops, to be able to create a custom block and have it automatically uh, sucked into Genesis blocks, then when someone's doing a one click theme setup, uh, those blocks are just there and, and ready to use. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the uh, you know the question also talked about layouts and it didn't say blocks. So for those unfamiliar, now Genesis blocks has not been released, so you're probably very unfamiliar. Uh, but within Genesis blocks are pre-designed and optimized blocks, also what are called uh, sections or parts of a page, which is a, a collection of blocks, if you will and then layouts, which are an entire page, and then something called collections, which are essentially like a whole website's worth of demo content, um, consistently designed demo content, uh, much like you might experience in one-click theme setup today. And so I think this notion of like, well, I need to create some blocks for that thing, and I might have my own you know, collection, if you will, for my agency or whatever my starting point is as a freelancer, or I might be a third-party theme provider like John and want to make my own for my, my child themes um, or uh, any, anywhere in between. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty 
obvious question, but it, it's, as the product and engineering team think about it, it's like, okay, well, we want to solve these individual jobs in these kind of individual ways, but how do we provide that in a way that provides a cohesive experience? So it's really good for that team, the R&D folks, to, to listen to that and see that, participate in that discussion. Mm -hmm. Next question from Brian. What would you like the blocks and Genesis blocks to be, uh, or would you like the blocks and Genesis blocks to be made available as individual blocks, like in the WordPress 5.5 directory, if it was possible, or do you prefer the consistency of like a collection of blocks? Um, Carrie, you say, I know what at WP fangirl Sally would say, uh, and then you winky face it. Why do you winky face? What, what, is, what is she going to say? You don't, no one actually responds no, to this face. comment here. From you. Uh, no, she's said in previous uh, Shaper meetings, I know that her preference is individual blocks and in the block library. Um, and John Brown kind of echoes that thought. And the idea is if you've, with a collection of blocks, maybe there's, I don't know, a dozen, two dozen blocks. Maybe you're only using two but do you want the overhead of styles loading for those unused blocks or whatnot? Um, and so if you're, if you've got the individual blocks, then you're kind of module. Oh, I need more coffee to say this word modularizing um, versus just having a bunch. Yeah. But, cramming it all in there. Yeah. And it seemed to be, you know, Several several folks commented. Um, Robin was a fan of the individual block. Uh, Nick Croft said he's a big fan of the foundry. Um, I wasn't familiar with that. The yeah, it seemed like individual blocks won. It feels like that notion. I mean, just looking at comments from like John, John Sally, Nawai, Robin, Nick. Um, I guess he has the, the foundry <laughs> suggestion there. Um, I think the downside. I think, and I, I don't know if it's even that material a downside is that if you're using all these different kinds of blocks made by different kinds of people um, and, and with different approaches that you could end up having some inconsistency on your site um, or inconsistency in how you manage your site. Um, but, I, you know, I think this is all so early on. I don't think anybody knows. <laughs> I do know people don't like cramming their site with stuff they don't use. Um, which is certainly one of the reasons that we kind of mentioned this a couple of times where kind of offloading the blocks you don't use, but still, you know, having access to them through uh, some sort of cloud offering is something we've been working on. Um, so that way you could, you know, have access to your custom things, and kind of pull it into WordPress right away. Um, but it seemed like the overwhelming majority was saying like, you know, prefer not to, you know, have a collection, but really kind of choose and pick and choose which ones I'm going to end up using. Yeah, the, the other side of that is when you install an individual block uh, from the, and if nobody's played with the block directory yet, I think it's wordpress.org slash search slash block, singular. Um, but when you install it, it installs as a plugin. So, you know, how to plugin management. I mean, I don't want to go to a plugin screen and see a hundred plugins. It'd be nice if they were nested somehow under a under a parent container that's a different conversation but it crossed right. my mind <laughs> all right well uh certainly very insightful um for us to be able to uh kind of get some of the uh insights there into how folks are thinking about it next question from brian have you heard about block patterns coming to wordpress soon how would you want expect block patterns to integrate with genesis Nick Croft says he loves block patterns. Carrie, I've got a, a, a little known fact for you. Block patterns were partially inspired by atomic blocks. Um, the work that Mike McAllister and John Paris had done there um, was part of the conversation. Of course, it's one of the strengths of open source and it essentially inspired this notion of block patterns. And it's funny because we will be shifting um, essentially Genesis blocks to leverage the block pattern you know, um, approach, if you will, within Genesis blocks. So it, it, we, are, we are kind of refactoring the thing to work with the thing that the thing inspired. So <laughs> this is like full inception and backwards, right? Um, I love it. What are, what are your thoughts on block patterns about what, uh, from what you've seen so far, though? Oh, they're amazing. Um, I've already been using, uh, so WordPress 5.5 introduced block patterns, and, and in case anybody's listening and didn't know, block patterns are just 
a collection of a group of several blocks. Um, so for instance, one of the core WordPress one is just two side-by-side -side buttons, um, it, which sounds crazy, but I don't know if you've ever tried button alignment and side by, anyways, it's really nice just to go, boop, put that pattern in my page, please. And it inherits theme styles. Weren't we talking about that earlier? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, block patterns are, are fantastic and, and really kind of one of the building blocks, if you will, on the way to full site editing. See what I did there? Uh, yes, use blocks. <laughs> I like it. You know, when we were coming up with the name for Genesis Blocks, they said, is, is this a future-proof name? I said, unless they introduce triangles, we should be okay. So, <laughs> we'll be okay until they do triangles. So go to triangles next year. I'm going to have to rename all the things. Um, Robin, to this question, she says, uh, they are one of the easier things to implement with the editor. Uh, actually, uh, actually. <laughs> and then she says, except for encoding the block content, she says that's doable. Um, so Robin's uh, definitely not like Neo from the Matrix when it comes to development as an individual. I mean, obviously she's you know, advanced relative to the whole wide world, uh, but it's really interesting to hear her perspective sometimes versus say someone like John Brown who will just get into the uh, guts of the Matrix to tell you all about the different things and uh, what his opinion of, uh, but it looked like Robin here thinking that was, uh, you know, at least one of the easier parts of the editor. Sally, WP Fangirl, I have heard about them and am thrilled uh, because I've basically been creating reusable blocks to fill the function of block patterns. I would expect the various layouts being offered by Genesis to use block patterns uh, once those are better established. So it looked like she was using reusable blocks somehow for that. Uh, John Brown says, yes, block patterns as groups of Genesis blocks plus core blocks seem great. So it seemed like I would say that the general consensus here was, yay, block patterns. What do you think? Yes, yes. Speaking of patterns, Carrie, we're wearing the same shirt today, and we did not plan this at all. We didn't, actually. No. And you didn't wear your – do you do you own an old school version of the Genesis WP t-shirt? I do. And – I it? had, it's currently on a quilt on my bed. Uh, oh, you made ago, it, somebody made yeah, it, in, you did or something. I had Andrea Rennick, I shipped all my WordPress huh. t-shirts to Canada and uh, she made me this this great quilt and that's my OG Genesis shirt is, is part of the part of the makeup. I like it. And can you explain to everyone listening like what the distinction is between the old school version and the one that you and I are wearing? Yeah, the old school is uh, all all lowercase. And a different font, yep. And so when uh, – this shirt was very popular back in the day. And so uh, not too long after the acquisition, I was like, we got to make one of those shirts. And again, I, I've been in the Genesis community prior to even joining WP Engine, ran Genesis Agency for five years. I was really excited to bring the shirt back. And the designers come in, they're like, check it out. We got it. It's ready to go. It's at the printers. I was like, it's the wrong – capitalization we gotta do the lowercase <laughs> ones and they were like but it doesn't look as good i'm like yeah but that's the the older version we gotta get that so we try to bring that one back but i do like this one it's very sharp i gotta say i i do like the kind of boldness of the all caps uh but this as i go to word camps and i wear this shirt i love it when these uh, people that have been in the community come out a long time and have those old shirts that come up to me and they're like you're just not as cool as me i had the, <laughs> the original genesis shirt new kid I know. This is what I got. This is what I, I just didn't get a shirt. I'm not that new. I, I started using Genesis around 2012 to 13, <laughs> something like that. Not that new. Um, but anyways, so that was the end of the questions there. I uh, really just want to do another shout out to Brian Smith, our guest moderator for uh, that meeting, uh, or the August 2020 meeting of the Genesis Shapers. Uh, did a really great job there. I might have to get him to do that more often so I can sit back and just like hammer out comments like everybody else uh, when those meetings are taking place. Carrie, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you'd like to check out more about what Carrie's up to, you can check out CarrieDills.com, D-I-L-S.com. I was going to give a shout out for you, Carrie, whether you whether you knew it or not. So uh, <laughs> check that. it out. Carrie has helped so many people learn Genesis. Um, you can also check out her courses on LinkedIn. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us here today. Uh, hear about uh, the Genesis Shapers meeting for August 2020 again. I'm David Vogelpohl. I've been a proud member of the Genesis community for over eight years. I lead 
a lead genesis at WP Engine, and I love helping the genesis community get better together with my friends at the Shapers. Thank you all.